and welcome to this video cast and podcast for subscribers to davidike.com. Well, I'm going to talk this week about the manipulation of emotion, the cynical manipulation of emotion by a global network and its agents and bloodline families that have an inability to feel emotion as most people do. And by that, I mean the inability to feel empathy, to put themselves in the feelings and in the consequences of their actions. So you can bomb the innocent as much as you like, and there's no emotional consequence for what you've made people suffer. But while this network uh, has an inability to feel so much human emotion, it is very skilled at manipulating that emotion in the target population. Now, of course, anyone who sees the pictures behind me of uh, Orman uh, Dachnish, who, um, of course, has been everywhere in recent times um, because of this photograph that's been uh, circulated around the world um, after um, an attack in um, Syria. And also um, Aylan Kurdi, the little boy, the three-year-old, uh, found dead on the beach, fleeing the terrorism and the war in Syria, trying to get to, uh, to Europe. Now, when you f see those pictures, you you cannot help but feel um, enormous um, emotion, and and so we should. Uh, it's it's heartbreaking what's happening um, to vast numbers of children like them. But the manipulation of emotion can also get us to accept things and believe things that suit the agenda of those that have made this happen. Because emotion um, reacts. It doesn't uh, stop and look at the bigger picture. It doesn't take a breath and look at the background. It reacts. And, and how um, can you... Um, not understand uh, an emotional reaction to pictures like this. But we have to be streetwise if we're not going to be manipulated uh, by our own emotional reactions. Because uh, it turns out, for instance, that uh, Orman, the five-year-old in Aleppo, um, that picture was taken by a man connected to a terrorist group that uh, recently beheaded a little Palestinian boy. So then you ask the question, why are you um, putting this uh, picture out of the, the suffering of this little boy when you're connected to a group that has beheaded children? Um, what has happened, of course, as a result of the emotional reaction, understandably, of that picture uh, or to that picture, the narrative that goes with it uh, is that Assad and the Russians basically are responsible. And this line about Assad uh, killing his own people, which, of course, is the, the line that was used to justify the invasion of, um, uh, of Libya and the uh, initial starting of this uh, crazy, mad, insane war in Syria. And then you look at the, um, the use of the picture of Aylan Kurdi, the little boy found dead on the beach. Uh, it was immediately after that picture circulated, when people were in a understandably um, emotional uh, state of reaction and response to that picture that 
people like Angela Merkel in Germany just open the doors to uh, unlimited numbers of migrants. And if you remember at that time, as the, the migrants um, uh, uh, poured off the trains in Germany, there were Germans on the platforms um, applauding them. Why? Because in their mind, because of this emotional response to this horrific picture, those people coming off the train were all Aylan Kurdi. And thus that reaction of, of, of come, come, come. Of course, Germany sees the migrant situation in a different way now, but the emotion and manipulation of emotion did its job. And this is an example of this emotional reaction that, that shuts out shades of grey, that shuts out seeing the bigger picture and can only see the dot, the emotional dot. Because, of course, um, when the West has started wars for its own cynical ends in terms of the, the hidden hand behind the West, uh, and have caused uh, great hardship, suffering and destruction in places like Libya and Syria. Of course, refugees from countries like that should be welcomed. Absolutely. And go on being so. The people in trouble, that's what humanity is about, isn't it? The point is, though, that in that big emotional response um, at that time that I've talked about, vast numbers of migrants came into countries who were not fleeing anything. They were opportunists, just taking the, 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 the opportunity to um, come into Europe. And of course, in terms of numbers and in terms of a clash of, of cultures, that's caused major problems. But it's exactly what the hidden hand wanted. If you look at people like George Soros uh, and all the usual suspects, you look at Angela Merkel, who is um, controlled by this hidden hand uh, down to a DNA. They all um, support this massive, massive and continued migration into Europe. And they want it for a number of reasons. I've done a YouTube video on this about a year ago, you can see it on my uh, YouTube channel, explaining why the migrant crisis was manipulated and, and triggered and why it's happening. Um, but one of the reasons is they want a clash of cultures. They want, um, in effect, civil war in Europe. I mean, we've got people like the, uh, the French police saying that, that France is on the, the verge of civil war. And, and all that's uh, been going on in um, Germany, with people uh, being warned uh, that, that, that terrorism now is something you have to live with, that you must stockpile food and, 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 and water and, and all this. It, it, it's all being used to create turmoil and upheaval in Europe um, because they want to um, transform the nature of Europe in terms of uh, breaking up countries in the end into a Europe of regions. And of course, one of the big major blocks to that is people's sense of, um, of their culture, their sense of, of nationhood. And the more you can create chaos and break that down and create divide and rule, the more that people will um, not resist uh, this transformation as they would otherwise. And Emotion um, doesn't tend to see uh, shades of grey, only sees black and white. So it's migration good or it's migration bad, um, immigration good, immigration bad. When it's um, a case of who's coming in and on what basis. It's the same way that um, you have this emotional reaction to Muslims as if um, you, you, you can demonize a whole uh, people 
uh, with, with, with one word, they're Muslims. Well, there are Muslim terrorists. There are, there are uh, deeply, deeply um, unpleasant and disturbed Muslims. But there's deeply disturbed people in every group. And uh, I can only speak from experience that uh, Muslims that I've met around the world and in the Middle East have been some of the nicest, kindest, um, most um, generous people that I've ever come across. In fact, there was a, 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 um, a report or a, a, an opinion piece in a new newspaper in Britain this week um, by a, a, a writer who was describing her experiences in Aleppo in relation to this uh, terrible picture. Um, of uh, Orman uh, Dachnish. She says, before the war began, I spent one of the happiest weeks of my life in Aleppo. Yes, the country was ruled by dictator Bashar al-Assad, but the people were welcoming and graceful. Smartly dressed children walked hand in hand in pairs to school, then played happily in the streets at dusk, uh, or as dusk fell over the city's ancient skyline, or helped out at their uh, parents' stall in one of uh, many souks. Uh, they always greeted foreigners with a cheery good morning in English. Such courtesy uh, as warm as their smiles. Indeed, education was treasured by Syrians. It was the main path available to offer children a better life. One night when I was lost in Aleppo, I asked for help from a woman who was leaning out of her front uh, door. I showed her the map in my guidebook and pointed uh, to where I needed to go. She beckoned a little girl from inside her home and the youngster uh, took my hand and led me to my destination, giggling and uh, talking in broken English. She couldn't have been much older than poor little Omran. Um, I offered her money as uh, a thank you. She looked... Um, slightly indignant and refused. After bowing and giving another beautiful smile, she turned and went home. I never asked her her name. Now I will never even know if she's still alive. So that is the country, that is the life that has been destroyed by the United States British manipulated war in Syria. And it also is an example of the blatant fact, which emotional reaction often forgets. It's the Muslims, drop a bomb on all of them, I say. How many times have I heard that? It's an example of the fact that not everyone is the same. That most Muslims are peaceful people and um, don't want to bomb anyone. But what we're seeing all the time is this um, emotional reaction on both sides, both um, uh, allowing things to happen like unlimited uh, immigration because of uh, emotional reaction. And also the demonization of people, a whole people, Muslim people, um, through, again, an emotional reaction to, to terrorism. And we've really got to start thinking straight because emotion stops you thinking straight. It makes you react and, and come out with um, uh, barely one dimensional uh, views and statements about uh, the world. And when you um, look at uh, this technique that I've been um, highlighting for so long, that I've uh, dubbed problem reaction solution, where you um, covertly create a problem, uh, get the reaction from the public, do something about the problem you've covertly created, and then you um, at, at stage three, offer the solutions to the problems you have covertly created, which are changes in society that advance your agenda. 
for uh, the transformation of the world um, in the way that you want. Now, the key part of problem, reaction, solution is the reaction. And what is the reaction? It's an emotional reaction. Do something. Usually um, a reaction that comes from fear. A terrorist attack. Oh, do something. Okay, what we're going to do is could take your freedoms away. Oh, yeah, well, I don't like that, but you better do it. We've got to be protected. This is how it works. Emotion, emotion. And if we just take a step back from the emotion and look at what's really happening. The reason that these children suffered what they have and stunning numbers of children are suffering uh, all the time and, and being killed and maimed all the time is because of the United States and the United Kingdom triggering um, wars in the Middle East, uh, trying to hide them um, after Iraq as people's revolutions, to um, follow an agenda which is very clear to see going back before 9-11. And they are um, fueling this conflict by arming and funding uh, the, uh, quote, terrorists in the form of um, ISIS, but also the rebels who are also overwhelmingly terrorists, um, but called uh, th th things like the, the Free Syrian Army, when the whole deal is just to get rid of Assad. That's, that's what it's always been about. And if the uh, Russians hadn't have come in when they did, they'd have probably have done it by now. So we're looking at a situation where the people responsible for this horror are actually uh, those who are condemning it. And I'll give you um, an example here uh, of uh, what a former French minister for foreign affairs, Roland Dumas, said on French television. I'm going to tell you something. I was in England two years before the violence in Syria on other business. I met with top British officials who confessed to me that they were preparing something in Syria. This was in Britain, not in America. Britain was organizing an invasion of rebels into Syria. They even asked me, although I was no longer Minister for Foreign Affairs, if I would like to participate. Naturally, I refused. This operation goes way back. It was prepared, preconceived and planned. In the region, it is important to know that this Syrian regime has a very anti-Israeli stance. Consequently, everything that moves in the region, and uh, I have this from the former Israeli Prime Minister who told me, we'll try to get on with our neighbours, but those who don't agree with us will be destroyed. And some 30 years ago, by the way, a Israeli strategist, as they called him, um, set out a strategy for Israel to follow. And it is virtually exactly what has unfolded since in the Middle East. So we um, don't see the children devastated by United States bombing, by British bombing, by NATO bombing, by French bombing, and whoever the hell else is bombing. We see um, emotional uh, pictures of those that are alleged to have been bombed by those which the West wants to demonize, i.e. Russia and Syria, mostly. It's all a grotesque use, exploitation, and manipulation of little kids suffering because of what they've done and set in motion.
being used to trigger emotions from the public which will get people to see the situation in the way that they want them to see it. It's, it's sickening and it's so important that people don't get pulled into um, such an emotional reaction that we lose perspective of what's actually going on and what's going on and by the way what's going on fundamentally has involved Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State to Obama what is going on is that a hidden hand without the ability to feel emotions like empathy is manipulating humanity which has those emotions um, in a cynical way for its own ends and we should think very uh, hard and take a take a breath and take a step back and look at it from a bigger perspective when these um, horrific and emotionally charged images are put before us because if we don't then we'll go on reacting in the way that suits the agenda that is causing, causing these kids to suffer so much.